In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined with Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your Holy Spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving Holy Spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all the truth by your Holy Spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed to us and rejoice in the glory that he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Ale si zbavuje lístia, aby jeho chrá... 
Our lesson for this Sunday of the Holy Trinity is found in the book of Romans, the 8th chapter. St. Paul writes, So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if we are children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. 
Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and testify to what we have seen, and yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is good to be worshiping together this morning. In fact, we hear in the Eucharistic liturgy that we worship together mystically in a wonderful way every Sunday, even if we're not quite aware of it. We pray that God would join our prayers with those of his servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest. And so this Sunday and every Sunday, we are worshiping together. We are walking together, as our bishop reminds us that funny word synod means. We are people walking together, worshiping together, like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, hearing our Lord's words as we go on our pilgrim way. This Sunday, Trinity Sunday, is sort of a funny festival in the life of the church because it is not one in which we commemorate an event from the life of our Lord. It's one uniquely that recognizes or celebrates even a dogma, a doctrine, a teaching of the church, that of the Holy Trinity, the mystery that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that might seem unusual to many of us, certainly to people on the outside, who would wonder what there is to celebrate about a mystery. Perhaps we don't quite understand what a mystery truly is. Many people think of a mystery as a brick wall against which we just stop and our minds can't fathom any further. When in truth, a mystery is much more like the depth of an ocean, something that we can explore and continue to find out more and more about, something the wealth and richness of which is never exhausted. Indeed, our being together, worshiping together, and celebrating in a way our unity on this Trinity Sunday is what it's all about. Our Orthodox siblings introduced the Nicene Creed by saying, let us love one another so that we may with one mind confess the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here's some insight we perhaps lack. Many in our society think the dogmas and creeds are exclusive or outdated or tedious at best. Some buy into the age's individualism and think it would be better for everyone to articulate her faith for herself in her own words. But perhaps here our perspective can be widened. Our unity as Christians confesses the nature of God just as well as our words do. Our oneness of heart and mind speaks to who God is, and our love for one another glorifies God. And so that's what faith is. Or rather, this is what our faith should be. In the Trinity, we see God revealed in Christ, an insight into God's own life, so that God, although in the light inaccessible, hid from our eyes, is beyond our comprehension. This Trinity, perfectly imaged in Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, reveals to us a God who is for us, a God who is with us. 
In Christ, we see a God who is never going to give you up, who is never going to let you down, who is never going to mess around or desert you. Here's some insight we perhaps lack. Many in our society think that dogmas and creeds are exclusive or outdated or tedious at best. Some buy into the age's individualism and think it would be better for everyone to articulate her faith for herself in her own words. But here, perhaps, our perspective can be widened. Our unity as Christians confesses the nature of God just as well as our words do. Our oneness of heart and mind speaks to who God is and bears witness. Our love for one another glorifies God. And so when we speak our faith with one voice, we confess that this faith isn't my faith or your faith, but rather it's shared. Because we have faith in a God who isn't my God and just happens to be your God, but who has brought us together in one faith, in one Lord, through one baptism. The Trinity, God's being in communion, a holy complexity, a mystery, isn't some distraction from the gospel. It's part of the gospel. It's not some theory for theologians to label and box God up with, but it's an invitation for every Christian to see the glory of God who is beyond our understanding, and yet who in love invites us to share in everything he is. In our gospel reading this morning, we see Jesus unpack this with Nicodemus. Jesus sits down with this teacher of Israel, the best educated, the most faithful, the most curious person we've met so far in the gospel story. And Jesus doesn't scold Nicodemus for not getting it, but he brings to his attention our limitations in speaking about God. Because even when we speak about spiritual things, we use the language of the flesh because that's what we know. That's how we experience life and the world. But Jesus, who is God with us, God among us, who is God in the flesh, through his flesh, tells us and shows us things about God that we wouldn't be able to figure out or that we wouldn't believe on our own. Belief, faith, isn't some sort of intellectual exercise. But as Luther says, it's a daring confidence in God's grace, something that we would stake our life on a thousand times. And so maybe that's where we get hung up when we talk about the creeds or celebrate a Sunday dedicated to a teaching of the church. Because when we say, I believe in God the Father, I believe in God the Son, we don't claim to know things about them, but we are saying that we trust in, rely in, count upon, and put our lives on the line for this. The mystery of the Trinity, this insight into the inner life of God, this glimpse given to us by Jesus of who God really is, reminds us that faith is not a matter of knowing about something or about this divine someone, but knowing them personally, intimately. In many languages, there are two different words meaning to know. To know about something or someone, and to know them personally. To say this is to say that Christians do not worship the Trinity by speculating about him, or by gawking at the persons from afar, but we worship the Trinity by participating in his very life. Indeed, if the Trinity is gospel and not some distraction from the gospel, then I have to commit to tell you that this is good news, that God is Trinity, and as unbelievable or as scandalous as it may seem, he is Trinity for you. Because in this life of sharing, of knowing and of being known, of loving and being loved, and becoming love itself, we are caught up to be part of God's own life a life in which we participate being joined to Jesus, in whom one of the holy, blessed, and eternal Trinity was incarnate, was born, lived among us, was crucified, died, and rose. 
that God is Trinity means that the one true God is not just another superego for us to butt heads with. God is not an impenetrable personality who works in mysterious ways, an unknowable being who we only understand as much as they're open and honest with us. In other words, God is not just a human writ large. For as much as the Trinity is a mystery and God remains beyond our feeble comprehension, we know this much. God, the one true God, is not some strong man on Olympus with secrets and lies who at the end of the day is out for himself. But neither is he the abstract God of the philosophers, some immovable mover, an impersonal first cause, a clockmaker who steps away once his creation is finished. No, God is a being in which whatever frail understanding we have about life and love is made perfect. God is a God in whom there are relationships and who doesn't invite us into relationship by telling us about himself, but by inviting us to share in his very life, by carving out a space for us in the Son, in the Logos, in the Word of God. The writer of Hebrews tells us that it is in him and through him and for him that the world was made. And so we who are alive in Christ, who share in Christ's own life, have seen the Father as we have seen him. We are filled with the Spirit. We have perfect access to God, in the words of St. Paul, not in the sense that an angelic secretary lets us into the divine boardroom whenever we want a meeting with God, but in that Jesus, through Jesus, we know the mind and the heart and share in the life of God. One of the most famous and beautiful depictions of the Holy Trinity is the visitors to Abraham. It's a story from Genesis where three angelic guests come to Abraham and Sarah's tent to announce the birth of a child. And the genius of this image is that it doesn't try to portray the Trinity in absolute terms. Not an old man with a beard, a young man with a beard and a bird, but in the mystery of God revealing God's self to his people in ancient times and in these last days through his son. The genius of this image aside, it fails to grasp the mystery of our life in the Trinity. We see the revelation of God as three and one in the visitors to Abraham. But because of the birth and death and resurrection of Christ, our view will change. We don't know God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as three sitting before us and we're the fourth, but rather sharing in Christ's life as co-heirs and co-regents. And if as little Christ, then even ourselves divine by grace, we sit with him and in him. Our view is that of the eternal sons, sharing in the life of the Trinity, having a seat at that table, living in the Son, the eternal word in whom all things subsist. So then, how might we experience this life of the Trinity here and now? Well, only to the degree that we share in Christ's life and imitate our Lord, living no longer for self, but for others, just as Jesus lived for others, which we see is exactly a reflection of the Trinity's inner life. Luther famously said that God does not need your good works, but your neighbor does. Because again, if God is not some super ego whose good side we have to get on, and God instead lives for relationship, desires relationships, and in sending the Son to free us from sin, death, and the devil, has freed us from this sin-sick compulsion to go it alone, to be the boss, to be like God as the serpent tempted in Eden. Although Jesus has shown us that even God isn't like that. This icon we talked about is called the hospitality of Abraham. In Greek, the philozenia, the love of the stranger. And that's what hospitality is, loving the strangers. If the words sound vaguely familiar, it's because philozenia is the opposite of our word xenophobia, fear of the stranger. 
to share God's life, to imitate Christ, who is the perfect image of God, we love one another. We welcome the stranger, the other, loving not just those who are like us or are like-minded, but inviting into our life those who are strangers, those who are different, just as we, the creature, have been invited into God's own life by a God who took creaturely form and made our nature his own. Love one another. Love the neighbor. Love the stranger. Joyfully, cheerfully, because each of us were neighbors and strangers brought near by Christ. And this is how we share in the life of Christ and how we share in the life of the Trinity, whom he has revealed to us. Autonomy, self-rule, self-sufficiency isn't the gospel. It isn't even freedom. In truth, what the world assures us is the way to be, is slavery of the highest order. And this insight requires no deep theologizing, no philosophical tricks. It requires simply looking at Jesus, the perfect human being, the only human so free that death could not hold him, and seeing that he did not and does not live for himself, but for others, for us, and looking at God, the Trinity, of whom Jesus is the perfect image, and seeing that this God, perfectly wise, perfectly free, isn't a lonely mind. The one God is mysteriously three, and perhaps more mysteriously, though he lacks nothing, creates in order to have fellowship with another and redeems us to bring us ever closer.
Let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For all who preach and minister in the name of the Trinity, that the Holy Spirit who sends them forth may also guide them into all truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the perfect peace that is the Holy Trinity may overflow into our world, creating a community of love between individuals, families, and nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that Jesus, in whom we have gained all access by faith to the grace in which we now stand, may make us one in truth and in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the wisdom of God, who is Jesus, through whom all creation came into being, may fill our hearts with a profound respect for the earth on which we all live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are enduring affliction in mind, body, or spirit, that their faith may bring them God's peace even in this time of testing of their endurance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed ones, that they may soon be caught up in the embrace of joy, love, and communion that is the most blessed Trinity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, O God, for your life-giving word, for calling creation into being, for declaring forgiveness from the cross, and delivering the spirit of rebirth. We praise you, O God, for your word. We praise you, O God, for your word. Your word is a lamp lighting our path, a mirror reflecting ourselves, a shield providing us refuge, a fire burning for justice and truth. Your word is sweeter than honey. It nourishes our bodies like milk. It sustains your people like bread. We receive your promises more treasured than gold. We bless you, O God, for your word. We bless you, O God, for your word. Open our ears to your prophets, apostles, and saints, and to all the cries of the needy. Breathe into your church the mighty spirit of Christ, that heeding your voice of beauty and power, we are strengthened to serve wherever we are called. To you, Father, Son, and Spirit, the source, the word, and breath, we offer our thanks for your life-giving word. We offer our thanks for your life-giving word. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Lord, Father, Father, who art in heaven, Lord, 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 in heaven hallowed, be hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, name. thy, thy, kingdom, thy come, kingdom come, thy will, thy will, thy will be done, done on earth as, on earth, earth, as, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the power of us. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Welcome, welcome to all who have joined us for this Trinity Sunday worship of service of the word. We're happy to have you with us and we thank you and all who have participated in making this service possible and for all of you that have joined us and joined us from every time and every place. Thank you all for partnering with us joining with us in the Slovak Zion Synod as we further the mission of Christ both here and abroad. We pray that this time of worship and praise to our triune God has been a blessing to you. And we pray that it has nourished you to be a blessing to others. Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen.